everybody, I'm Nathaniel Dodson from tutvid.com, and today we're going to talk about 10 amazing tips, tricks, features, you know, stuff you just got to know about the Liquify tool in Photoshop. Now, if you do enjoy this tutorial, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can check out all the Photoshop tutorials and never miss anything in the future. And also, consider picking up a copy of my Photoshop course. It's all about how to retouch images in Photoshop. It's the best way to support the channel. There's a link that appears up in the top corner of the video, but there's also a link down in the bio of the video, and it's the best way to support the channel. And in fact, this channel is funded by viewers just like you. So thank you for that. Without further ado, let's jump in and check out this tutorial. And here I have a friend of mine, Natalie, and uh, just a photo I, I snapped of her in Philadelphia uh, probably about a year ago now. And we're going to take this photo and we're going to perform some liquefaction stuff to it. So first and foremost, one of the, the most important aspects, I think, of liquefy is making sure that you convert the layer which you are going to, you are going to liquefy to a smart object. So simply right-click on the layer and choose here, convert to smart object. It's very, very important because then we can always jump back into liquefy and continue editing. So that's the first thing. All right, up here under filter, we have our liquefy feature. And you can see here if I just come in and let me just show you if I really mess things up like crazy. Let me shut off this backdrop thing. But if I do something crazy and I hit OK and it makes the change and I realize, oh, I don't want to do that well, I hit this little drop down arrow and there's liquify. Number one, I can shut it off to get a quick before and after. But more importantly, I can just double click on the word liquify and jump back into the liquify panel. I can choose this option here, restore all and get rid of the liquefaction and I am back in business. Now, the second thing that I want to talk about here is once we're in this liquify panel, you can see it's almost like a little mini program within Photoshop. There's some cool things uh, that you can do. Number one, you have normal navigation tools like you have out in Photoshop, but we can also use the hotkeys like command plus or command minus to zoom in or out, right? And then once you have zoomed in, you can hold in your space bar key and you can click and drag to quickly move around the image if you like. You can also hit command and or command or control, I should say, command or control zero to fit the image. And you can also do command or control one. And you can see here that just zooms the image back to proper 100%, navigate around uh, and it looks great. You can also uh, quickly up or downsize the brush size you're using. So here we're using the forward warp tool here and I can use my bracket keys, left or right bracket keys to make that brush larger or smaller. You can see over here the size changing as I just, you know, press my left or right bracket keys, uh, making that brush larger or smaller. That's an incredibly helpful one. Uh, if you do start performing edits, you can use command or control Z to undo if you need to step back. If you make a whole bunch of changes here and you decide, you know what, this is all fouled up, you can hold down the alt or option key and down over here the cancel button will turn into a reset button you can hit that and you can reset but you can see this doesn't reset the actual mesh like this does not do what restore all does this just restores to the way liquify was kind of when you opened it uh, remember when we opened we had made this big you know kind of wavy thing uh, so at this point we would just say you know it's, we want to get things we want to restore order so we're going to restore all over here and now it's looking kind of like we want it to look now one of the other things that's cool and here if I just pull up the twirl tool here. Uh, I'm going to make the brush a little bit larger. And if you click and hold this, you can see it rotates clockwise. But with any of these tools here in uh, in the liquify panel, the, the pucker and the bloat tools, the sort of move or push left tool, all of these things also will do the exact opposite if you hold down the alter option key. So if I hold down alter option and click, now you can see it rotates counterclockwise. So kind of a cool little trick. You can hold down that alter option key uh, and you can do all kinds of crazy things. I'm going to hit restore all because that's just a really bad look for her. And uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want her to look that way. I'm going to zoom out one touch here. And speaking of tools, moving right along to the third uh, the third feature I want to talk about is the forward warp tool. So this is the kind of like the traditional liquify tool. It's what you're going to be using probably most of the time. Now, the number one, absolute number one thing with this tool is you almost always want it to be larger than the area which you're liquefying. So let's say Natalie says, hey, you know, I just like my arm, I, I want my arm to be a little bit straighter. I don't like this bump, the way the dress was lying on, uh, you know, coming down off my shoulder. I just don't like it. Can we push my arm in a little bit? Well, instead of coming along with a, you know, a small forward warp brush and trying to tuck all of this in, I would take a forward warp brush that's a little bit bigger than the area which we're going to be working on and I would just click and drag to bump 
and just slowly and gently nudge the whole area over a little bit. Now, you're also going to want to take into account stuff that's moving or, you know, being dragged in the background. You don't want anything to look like you've got this, like, stretching of pixels going on. That's always a bad look. You can come over here and just tick off preview. You can see there's before, there's after. So we can clean that right up. Not too bad. We want to watch those straight lines going up and down on the building behind her. It is pretty blurred, but you just want to be careful with that kind of stuff. Now, also with the forward warp tool, as with, you know, a lot of these other brush tools, we have our options up here in terms of size, which we talked about changing before, but we also have pressure and pressure is like the amount, the, the deadliness of the brush. You can really, you know, do a lot if you crank that pressure up. We also have this density option. Now, density is kind of like the strength of the edges of the brush. So if I just paint in, you can see how it almost, you know, creates this really pointed, uh, you know, forward warp effect. If I crank the density to 100 and I push it, you can see how it really, it's a much more cupped effect where much more of the brush is pushing through that. So the edges of the brush are a little bit stronger. So just something to think about. And also, I almost always keep pin edges uh, turned on. And that's just because if I'm getting up close to the edge of the image, I would rather have a little bit of stretch in the pixels up there than have a totally transparent or white background showing through. So just something to think about. Pin edges can be super duper helpful. But really the main takeaway is just make the brush a little bit bigger than the area which you're working on. I'm going to turn the pressure down here to make this a little bit more manageable. Um, and I'll just, you know, stretch that out a little bit. I'll tuck in the arm and the hand and the hip on this side a little bit. Looks pretty good. Now, let's say we're looking at this and it's just like, nah, this isn't really working out. Um, what we can do is we can use a tool like the reconstruct tool here. Now, the reconstruct tool is great. And actually, maybe I can give you a better example here. If we're pulling stuff around on this background, let's say, and we're really like, we've really stretched out. It's a pretty obvious figure of a person, but now it looks like they're sort of figure skating down the middle of the street we need them to look like they're walking straight up. So we would grab the reconstruct brush and size the brush down here and we would just paint over this area. We would say, look, just, you know, restore that person kind of as they should be. And we can even just drop the density here to sort of weaken the edges. I'll drop the pressure of this brush as well. And we could just gently paint over the area to just restore and fade that part of the image back into the remainder of the image. This is particularly helpful. Let's say there was space between her arm, right? Like she had her hand on her hip and we needed to tuck her hip in a little bit. And we ended up pulling part of her arm over with it when we slid the hip over. You can just go in with the reconstruct brush, paint over that arm, and make sure you're not like making her wrist or her forearm super duper wide. It's really, really uh, useful and helpful. Now, the next feature that I want to talk about is the smoothing brush. The smoothing brush is really great. If we uh, if we were to come in here with something like forward warp, and let's just do something a little crazy here. Let's say we started pulling her uh, her kind of her rear end out on this side, her hip and her butt, and you know we get this obvious kind of like bumpiness, which is very unrealistic, doesn't look good. Well, you can just take the smoothing brush and you can just begin going over this. Now, the smoothing brush, if you do go over an area enough, the smoothing brush is kind of like the restore brush, just very, very easy and light, and eventually it will restore the image uh, to basically pre-liquify in that area, but it does a really nice job of just taking an edge that really should be much smoother and not have bumps or hard edges, and it just really helps you smooth that area out. It does a really, really nice job of that. Uh, definitely an underrated tool uh, that you can use to really clean up and hide an edge that you're liquefying. Now, one other tool, or really two other tools that I want to show you here are the pucker and bloat tool. So pucker does just what you think. You click, and it's going to kind of suck that area way in. You can see now she has this kind of huge hair, but her face is tiny. I'm going to undo that. And again, by the way, you have your size, you have your density and rate with pucker. If I crank rate up, it's going to move a lot faster. And if I tone rate down, it's going to move very, very slowly, right? So I'm going to undo that. And this is, by the way, another one of those tools that uh, you can just hold down alter options. So I can click the, pu you know, push her face in a little bit. Let me just undo that. Let me turn the rate up a little bit here so we can see this with some reasonable speed. I can, you know, push her face in, but then I can hold down alter option and I can pull her face out. In fact, I can begin to bloat her face, uh, both of which are really bad looks. So I'm going to undo that. But the, the obvious tool for pucker and bloat are, you know, breast enlargement or sometimes you need to push or pull, you know, uh, the size of a limb, like a leg or an arm or something. But one of the areas that I find is useful so we could just take you know bloat here and we could just hit her chest if you know again if it's something that she wanted us to do but one of the areas that I find this stuff really really useful is if like we do have an edge we need to push in like maybe we need to push her shoulder down a little bit yeah you could use forward warp but sometimes pushing with the bloat tool from the outside so we're really bloating this area around her shoulder and therefore it's just kind of crunching her shoulder inward a little bit and the same thing here with the pucker tool if we needed to pull something out so if we need to pull the base of the dress out a little bit we could 
could do that. And over here, if we needed to pull her hip out a little bit more, maybe drop her wrist down or whatever it may be, or this is a great area or a great example of an area where maybe her wrist is getting a little messed up now, right? Her wrist looks like it's really twisted. So we would take that restore brush. We would make the restore brush a little bit smaller and we would just go ahead and paint over her wrist area and make sure that her wrist is not being contorted out of shape because we're adding this bump here to the side of the dress. Uh, another area where a bloat can really work well is something like around her face. We can really just kind of poof her hair out a little bit. So you can see I go around her face and do this. Now the, pro the obvious problem is that I am affecting her face. So I'm just gonna undo a bunch of times here. And it's gonna somewhat conveniently bring us to these next few tools here. And these are the, free the freeze and thaw tools, which is basically the way that you lock a particular area of your image so that liquify does not not mess it up. So I'm going to grab the freeze tool here and just those same square bracket keys to, to, you know, resize the brush. And I'm going to paint red over her face. In fact, I'm going to zoom in a little bit here because why not zoom in when we've got all the screen real estate to play with. And I'm just going to, you know, draw, a, it really doesn't have to be a perfect mask at all. And the, the cool thing about this is all of the stuff under red is locked in place. It's frozen. It will not be affected by anything we do. So we could take the bloat tool here. We could say, look, poof out her hair a little bit. And this also is an area where something like the push left, which is kind of a bizarre name for the tool, push left, because it can push left or push right. If we wanted to make the hair a little bit bigger, we could just paint up over the hair and just push the hair out. And this is another case where you'd hold down alter option. And when we pull down, well, you, well, you can see when we pull down it's and hold down alter option, it's going to push the hair in. If we pull down, it's going to push the hair uh, to the right. So you push up, it pushes the hair to the left, pull down, pushes the hair to the right, and then alter option would reverse those. Uh, but if you get it one way, you get it anyway. Now we can get rid of this frozen area by either coming over here and using the thaw tool and erasing it, or we can just come over here to the mask options and we can hit this none button. And you can see that's going to wipe out any frozen areas. And if we zoom out a little bit, we've now made her hair just a little bit bigger and we haven't gone and messed with her facial features. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK here and just commit these liquify changes. And we can see if we shut it off, there's before, there's after. We've made some changes. Uh, but I want to just quickly jump over to another photo here and check uh, or show you something else that's pretty cool. Uh, so let's say we've got our model right here. I'm just going to right click on her layer and convert her to a smart object as I like to do before I uh, jump into liquify. And once that's a smart object, we'll go filter, liquify. Now here in liquify, you can see the image looks quite a bit different because it's isolated her uh, her layer. It's just her over a transparent background, which is great, but maybe we want to see this in context to the rest of the image. So when you're doing something like this, there's this show backdrop feature here in liquify, which is really super helpful. And just ignore this glitchiness. This either has to do with my screen recorder or the fact that it's a 16 bit image. Sometimes it just kind of plays around and, and doesn't quite do what you want it to do. Uh, but the fact is it still, it still works here and you can change the opacity here, depending on how much of the background you want to see. But this is a great example of, let's say the, the model says, Hey, look, I really, would like my hip on this side pushed in a little bit so we could grab like forward warp here make the brush a little bit bigger and I could come in here and I could push the hip in now of course what's happening here is we're seeing that the arm is going to be pulled out we don't like that so we would undo this we would take our freeze tool first and we would say look lock that arm up do not mess with that arm grab that forward warp tool push the hip in a little bit there we go voila and then I can just release the freeze I can just hit OK and we can see before and after. So I can just pop open my smart object. There's before, oh, I'm sorry, there's there's after, and then just give it a second here and it'll re-render the before. And yeah, you can just see the hip gets pushed way in and there it is without liquify. So, but the, the whole point here is just being able to view in context of your background can be very helpful, especially if it's, you know, maybe you're trying to make sure that a background light is going to shine through uh, or just a specific element is interacting in your composite image the way that it should be. Let's jump back to our initial shot. I want to show you something else here. And this is the ninth thing about a select a ma or select a mask about uh, liquify that is very, very cool. You can create a selection. Here's why I said select a mask. Let's say uh, we want to select her arm. Arm, right, We could just run with the click, quick selection over her arm or roughly over her arm, whatever. And we could do a couple things here. We could right click on this and choose to save this as this selection, right? We're, so we would save this selection as a new, uh, a new channel. So we could just call this hand, all right? And I'm going to command or control D to deselect. And let me also just drag a selection over her face here, right? Something like this, just a rough selection. It's nothing perfect, but it's close enough. And even just with an active selection like this, 
if I were to come back here and double click on the word liquify, it would load up my liquify, but you can see everything except her face is locked. But see, I'm probably making this selection because I want her face to be locked and I want to liquify stuff around her face. So if that's the case, you would come over here to your mask options and you would just choose this invert all option. And that's then going to lock up her face and you can see everything else is as it should be. We could come here with forward warp and we could do all kinds of crazy stuff. Now it's going to be difficult to see because I still have show backdrop turned on. And with show backdrop turned on, by the way, if you, uh, if you don't, if you aren't, if you're not working within a composite, you're just going to see that image sort of in its original state. And in my opinion, at least it's just a little distracting. So you could just come in here and do all kinds of crazy stuff and you can see it's not going to mess up her face. You're going to get all kinds of weird, stragulated, whatever, you know, striations of pixels coming off of the side of her head. Not a great look. Uh, but the point is we didn't do damage to her actual facial features. Uh, one of the other things we can do here is if we just hit none, you can load a selection. We have this replace selection, add and subtract from selection, intersect and invert selection options. If we just say this replace selection here, when we hit that little arrow, that little tiny arrow, we can choose a, a, a channel. And right now the only alpha channel we have is this hand selection. And if I do that, you're going to see that the hand is brought up. And sure enough, all I want to do is come over here and just choose, yeah, just invert that because I want to lock her hand in place. And then I could come in here and either tuck the dress in, pull the dress out, whatever needed to be done, you know, based upon the client's request uh, for that particular garment or that fashion photo or wh whatever we may be working with. Hit the none option to get rid of any frozen areas. And I'll probably even just take the reconstruct brush here and just paint over this area, make sure that we're not, uh, make sure we're not messing anything up. So now last but not least, I want to show you the face aware and face tools here in liquify. I'm just going to get rid of all that liquefying that we just did. We can go back to filter and choose liquify once more. We're still on that smart object. It's all good. A couple things here. I'm going to zoom in on her face. We have this whole face aware liquify uh, panel within the liquify uh, dialog box. So I can open that up. And what Photoshop is going to do is it's going to try to pick out every face that is in the image. And in this case, it only has face one, which should be her face. And for the most part, Photoshop gets it right. Occasionally, it will mess it up and like, you know, read somebody's mouth as a chin. Uh, but let's just take a look here. We're going to look at eyes last because they're, they're really kind of cool. But let's just take a look at face shape here. You can uh, increase the height or decrease the height of the forehead, uh, chin height as well. You can drop the chin or you can boost the chin, either or. You can widen or narrow the jawline. And you can also just kind of widen or overall narrow the face. It's a really, really powerful tool. Now, there is the face tool over here, which is a little bit more of like a heads up display. You can click and move elements around. I tend to prefer using the sliders. The one thing that the face tool is really great about is you can literally just grab a facial element like an eye and just drag it and move it. Now, it won't let you move it like anywhere indiscriminately, but it will let you kind of jack the face up. You can move a nose. You can move a cheek. You can move the mouth. You can move, move all kinds of stuff and just do a lot of really bad, horrific damage. I'm going to undo all of that, though. Um, I, I tend to prefer to work with the, the sliders because if Photoshop gets a good read on the face you're working with, the sliders are just such a precise, nice way to move. Let's take a look here at the mouth. So you can, you can sort of force this like cheesy digital smile, which is a little creepy, or you can make it more of like a stern, foreboding look. Uh, the upper lip, you can make it like taller, or you can make it shorter, either or. The same thing with the lower lip, you can make it either smaller or bigger. You got to be careful. You can, the lower lip, I tend, I tend to notice, can be made very, very fat and really unnatural looking. Uh, you can change the overall width of the mouth if you want it to be really tiny or really wide. And the same thing for the height of the mouth. And one of the cool things about mouth height is you can almost, it's, it's like the lip are closing around the teeth a little bit more. So if the model's expression is just perfect, but maybe he or she just has their mouth not quite perfectly, boom, you can make that little adjustment. So we can also come in and adjust nose height. You can adjust nose width. Uh, all kinds of stuff like that. Uh, and then last but not least, eyes. So eyes are great because you can either work on an eye individually or you can hit the little chain link icon, link them together, and we can just boost the size of both eyes together. We could maybe change the height of one eye or make one eye slightly more squinty. Uh, you can change the width of the eyes, right? I probably want to do that together. So you can make them a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller that way. And you can also tilt the eyes. So you can kind of rotate them inward, rotate them outward. Uh, and, you know, or if, or if one eye is slightly off, you can just rotate it around a little bit just to line it up a little bit more perfectly. And you can also increase or decrease the distance between the eyes. Uh, definitely kind of 
I don't know. It's a little, it's kind of a little crazy when you sit here and think about what you can do. I just double click the hand tool there and it just brings me, uh, fits the image onto the screen. And I think we can just come down here and choose preview and see there's before, there's after. So we just change her face a little bit. It's definitely enough that she would notice that something is not quite, you know, right with her face, so to speak. Uh, but sometimes, you know, when, when you need to go in and, and change a facial feature, this is a really, really powerful tool to do that in Photoshop. Now, I want to just come over to this other photo here real quick because I want to see if Photoshop going to pick up both of their faces. So let's just jump into liquify filter, liquify here, and I can see here face aware liquify and there's face one and face two. Now I'm going to grab the, the face tool here and you can see this is just very, very much the same set of features. So with face one here, let's see if she's face one or if he is face one, I'm not sure here. We'll be able to tell in just a moment. Let me here hover over her eye and I'll just try to make her eye smaller or large, all right, so she's face two. Oh no, she, yeah, she's face two. You can see that it switched automatically to face two and eye size just went to negative 100. Now, one of the, the, the interesting things I should say is that it only targeted the eye that I scaled up or down, right? I'm just gonna undo that. What if we wanna move both eyes in unison here with this heads up display? Well, you can hold down the shift key and that's gonna move both eyes in unison. So we can make like her eyes giant. We could tuck her nose up a little bit. We could maybe make it not quite as wide. We could close her bottom lip up a little. We could maybe pinch her mouth in. We could come over here with his eyes, hold down shift, make both of his eyes giant as well. We can just grab this, make him smile even more. It just looks ridiculous, I know, but we're just going crazy with this. Uh, yeah, so I don't know. The the face tool you can go in. It's great to have a very intuitive, just jump in and play with features of the face, see what it looks like if you kind of push and pull them around a little bit. We take her, take her nose and, and move it over and we just make her look very, very bizarre. Uh, but there's before, there's after. You can do a lot with this face tool. And again, for the heads up display, the, the actual face tool and not the sliders, uh, the, the only reason that I would even come close to preferring it is just the fact that you can drag stuff around. But for precise changes that are like real world, doing work for a client, I almost always end up using the sliders over here for the face aware liquify. But they both, you can see they're all part and parcel of the same tool. They're, they're selecting and working with the same faces, face one and face two. Now, one really quick thing here, if I were to come in here let's just say I do something crazy and I'm just gonna like push his head way over right and I hit restore all you're gonna see that restore all works with like these pixel pushing tools but it doesn't undo the face work that I've done making the eyes big and wide and all crazy we can reset that stuff by coming in here to face liquify and, and choosing reset but you can see here what the tooltip says see how it says reset current face so if I choose to reset face one is him you can see it just resets him I'm actually gonna undo that if we want to reset both faces when you have have more than one face, you can just hit the all. That's going to reset both faces. But of course, if we wanted, we could have just gone to face two, which is her face, and boom, just reset her face as well, and just given him the funny looking face and been done with it, hit OK and live with our liquify changes. So that's gonna pretty well wrap this one up, guys. I know it's, you think liquify, oh, I jump and I push and pull stuff around, and that, by the way, is probably the best way to really learn liquify, is just jump in, spend a couple minutes playing around with it. Uh, but there's really a lot of cool stuff you can do, and there's even some stuff that we didn't even touch on. Uh, the big one for me, the face tool and the face aware liquify is huge, but that whole freeze and thaw feature, if you've never used that before, that is gonna save your life. There's so many like Photoshop disasters where you know a guy has gone and tried to make his biceps bigger or a girl goes and trying to make her boobs or her butt bigger and you know the, like the the trim around the door that she she or he is standing in front of is all like curved and warped and screwed up and you can tell that they went in and they did some cheating but with the freeze uh, tool you can really kind of hide and cover your tracks a lot better so there's a lot of cool features for liquify there in photoshop i hope you guys enjoyed it for the 10 tips and tricks and features of liquify that we covered today the thaw and the freeze and the face aware and the pucker and warp and everything else. Guys, that's it. Get it, got it, good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do. And this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.